She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Hi, welcome to The Danny Johnson Show. Thanks so much for joining us today. Today is that one day out of the week that we kind of put a pause on the everyday stuff of our life that seems to just be spinning and spinning and spinning. And we're going to put a focus on your spiritual life because when your spiritual life is out of control, it's dry, it's a mess, everything else seems to be a mess too. I know for me, like if I feel like our spiritual lives is our compass for our life. It's the thing that directs us. If we're dry, then the marriage seems to be dry and our parenting seems to be dry. We just kind of find ourselves in a rut or we're even stuck. But man, when you get refreshed... And you set time aside to refresh yourself, even on a daily basis, or in this case, once a week at least, with The Danny Johnson Show. We're going to focus on the spiritual part of our life. When you do that, you get that spiritual refreshing. The clouds kind of clear up. The fog kind of dissipates. That hardness inside of our heart kind of gets cracked so that we can start moving ourselves where we belong. So we're going to have that focus today. Um, And especially, yeah talking about making preparations for the future, you know, and what puts us on the right track for preparations for the future, as well as maybe a few places that might be a good idea that we just, you know, how once a week you should be dusting your house, depending on the time of year, you know, there's certain times of year that you need to dust more than others. Well, you know, there might be some dusting, a little bit of shining that needs to be done. So let's go ahead and get right into it. We're going to be reading from the book of Mishle. You're like, what? Proverbs. <laughs> Proverbs. The book of Proverbs. I'm reading from the scriptures. It's the Institute for Scripture Research. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite translation because it's straight from Hebrew to English and it leaves all the Hebrew words, sorry, names um, in Hebrew. It, it actually didn't turn the Hebrew names into English names. It's actually Hebrew names. And I, I love connecting to that language and connecting to Uh, Especially seeing every time it says God's name in the original Hebrew text, it shows it here in the text versus God. Sadly, all of our Bibles took God's name out of the Bible. This one has protected God's name, keeping it in as it shows up in the original Hebrew and the Bible. The First Testament was written in Hebrew, Second Testament written in Aramaic. So I'm going to, after I scratch my nose, I'm going to pray. Um, so, Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this time and space. I thank you, Father, for your word, and I pray you be the one that teaches us today. You be the one that leads, guides, guards, and governs us today and direct us exactly where you want us and speak loud and clear to us. You be the one that that uh, tells us what our next steps are so that we can please you, we would honor you, that we would walk clean before you and be blessed as a direct result of that. We ask these things in the name of your beautiful, amazing son, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. Okay. So we're talking in Proverbs, starting in, starting in Proverbs chapter 16. It says, to man belongs the preparations of the heart. (laughs) It's like, stop right there. (laughs) To man belongs the preparations of the heart. But from Yahweh, is the answer of the tongue. I wrote down in my Bible, yikes! (laughs) That's just verse one, man. (laughs) This is verse one of chapter 16 of Proverbs, which in Hebrew is Mishle. So to man belongs the preparations of the heart. It is your job and my job to prepare our own hearts. Yeah, that's our, you know, so often I think, I know I have, that I have wanted God to change my heart. Oh, gosh, (laughs) I'm getting worked over right now just thinking about this. This is hitting me right now as I'm talking to you, okay? Just listen. How many times, like how many times have you prayed for God to change your heart or for God to change somebody else's heart? right? I've prayed that before. I I don't know if you've prayed that before, but what we see right here, this truth right here written by King Solomon that says to man belongs the preparations of the heart. (laughs) That means it is my responsibility to prepare my heart. Mm -hmm. Asking God to change my heart. Hmm. Because right here it says from But from Yahweh is the answer of the tongue. 
So basically, what we speak comes out of our hearts and he answers what we speak. We see this in a couple other places, right? Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Okay, that's also written here in Proverbs. So out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Okay, we are what we say, right? Our reality of our life is what we say. Life and death is in the power of the tongue, right? But look at this, that it belongs to man, the preparation of the heart. So it's actually my job to prepare my heart. So if I am raging with fear, jealousy, bitterness, resentment, me asking God to change my heart is not going to do much because it's up to me to prepare my heart. So what does that mean? That if I've got angst against my brother, that is my choice to keep that or it is my choice to humble myself and to present before my God, the living God, a humbled heart, meaning my job is to humble my own heart. <laughs> That's my job. That is also your job. So if you have bitterness or resentment, jealousy, worry or anxiety, and you're asking God to change your heart, if you've got hatred or malice towards someone else and you're asking God to change your heart, he's saying, dude, change your own. That's what this is right here. Your heart is your job. It is your job. Quit looking for the lottery ticket here. Quit looking for the magic pill here. Quit looking for the magic potion, lotion, or anointing oil or anointed person that somehow is going to come along and tap you on the heart and oh, all things going to be new. No, he is clearly saying right here and now that it is your job your job to prepare your heart and he answers your tongue so that which comes out of your heart and your mouth speaks he does what you say he does what you say so you might be saying change my heart but still your words after you're done praying might be still jealous the word still might be bitter the word still might be unforgiving the word still might be of malice the word still might be something prideful and evil. He's gonna answer your words, not just the prayer. This is Danny Johnson, we'll continue with more after this. Do you have a closet full of clothes yet say, I have nothing to wear? Are you a mom doing her best, but desperately lacking me time? Or maybe your schedule has you dressing practically instead of powerfully. What if I told you there's a system, a blueprint that can save you time, money, and turn every head in the room, as well as impact the world through fashion, friend, you're in the fashion business whether you like it or not. You're an ambassador representing your faith, your marriage, family, and business. Style is just a skill. A skill made easy with 123 Style Me. 10 steps to style success that will expand your leadership, save you hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars. This program will bring you peace of mind, reignite your marriage, make you more productive, respected, and instantly boost your confidence, equipping you to be bold and beautiful. Go to courses lindapage.com. Again, that is courses.linda, L-I-N-D-A, P-A-I-G-E dot com and make a priceless investment in yourself. Are you confident that you're always getting a good deal? Have you been equipped with the negotiation confidence strategies, tactics, and supporting tools you need to close world-class deals? Finally, JPA is making the exact same specialized negotiation training and secrets used by the world's largest, most successful corporations available to everyone. Proven in more than 60 countries and used by brands like Adidas, Vodafone, Pfizer, Nokia, and others, the JPA negotiation method will set you up to save money and time while significantly increasing your profits. It doesn't matter if you're buying or selling real estate, closing contracts with suppliers, or selling products and services to individuals or organization. Using their simple step-by-step -step negotiation preparation checklist, you'll be ready to confidently slug it out toe-to-toe -to -toe with the toughest professional negotiators. It's time for you to stop leaving money and opportunity on the table. Go to bizneg.com forward slash events to register now. Again, that's B-I-Z-N-E g.com forward slash events. Get registered today. Financing a home can be a nightmare if you don't know exactly what you're doing. Ask me. 
I know this. That's why the first thing you have to do is find a mortgage company you can trust that has your back through the entire process. Whether you're buying your first home, upgrading your current one, or looking for an investment property, Rick Fujisaki at Wintrust Mortgage wants to win your trust. Rick understands the mortgage industry and he can take all the stress out of financing a home for you. His easy to use worksheets will help you calculate the mortgage you can't afford. And he has a unique tool designed to help you find and set aside money for your down payment. And when you work with Rick, who, by the way, I love, a portion goes to caring for the poor through King's Ransom Foundation. So visit LoanMortgageGuys.com and start building your dream today. Again, contact Rick at LoanMortgageGuys.com. And now, back to The Danny Johnson Show. Oh, friend, I'm telling you, today is a doozy, right? As we're reading from Proverbs chapter 16, Verse 1 in that last segment, now here is verse 2, right? Let's start with verse 1 again. To man belongs the preparations of the heart. That's your job. That's my job. Your heart is your job. My heart is my job. And I must prepare it to go in the direction where I want it to go. If there's yucca in my heart, it's my job to confess it. It's my job to humble my own heart because it says this, that but from Yahweh, is the answer of the tongue. He's going to answer what we say. So it's like we can shoot up this nice religious prayer and then we can act like an idiot with our tongue. He answers our tongue. So if most of the day our prayer is not, our, our tongue is not lining up with our prayer, <laughs> guess what's going to outweigh your prayer? Because he answers your tongue. Okay, so verse two. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. Gosh, that is, you know what I wrote? Ouch. That's what I wrote in my margin of my Bible. Ouch. Ouch. I'm going to say it again. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but Yahweh weighs the spirits. Hmm. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. Why don't you remember that the very next time you try to prove to someone what an idiot they are? Just remember that. You know, there's a great book that completely changed my life 27 and a half years ago. And that was called How to Win Friends and Influence People. And the first three chapters showed me why I was a homeless woman who had been abandoned by my family, by my friends, by my coworkers. Why I had been embezzled, why my first husband left and ended up sleeping around with other people. The first three chapters of How to Win Friends and Influence People completely highlighted, shined a giant beacon on one simple fact. Yeah, this one right here. Yeah, mm mm-hmm. That all the ways of a man are clean in his own. You see, I was a victim. I took no responsibility for my constant complaining, my constant nagging, my criticizing and condemning. Those first three chapters of that book so radically changed my life. And in one of the, in one of the chapters, it talks about how some of the most notorious, yes, most notorious, most evil people on earth saw themselves as nice, sweet, kind people who are just trying to better humanity by murdering people. So listen, the person you're accusing, yeah, thinks his ways are clean. And you who are accusing somebody, who if you are accusing somebody and you're not God, well, guess what? Your ways are also not clean, but you think your ways are clean. You see, we all, because of self-preservation, we all see ourselves to be better than we actually are. So you got to remember that, that when you're trying to trap someone else, you're trying to prove to somebody else, you're trying to argue with somebody else that, hello, their ways are not good ways and that they screwed up and they missed that and they missed this and, and they screwed up that detail and they dropped the ball over here, that when you're trying to point those things out, they only see that their ways are clean. Ugh! Reminds me of the email that I sent today. Oh my gosh, am I ever going to learn this? <laughs> this is so awesome. But look at this again. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. Listen, this helps me 
because I need to remember that about myself, that I clearly think higher of myself than I ought, and I'm so grateful that Yahweh, the Bible says, again, that's right here in, in, in Proverbs 16, verse 2, where his name shows up in Hebrew, that he weighs the spirits. So it says in verse 3, commit your works to Yahweh, and your plans shall be established. Yahweh has made all for his purpose and also the wrong for the day of evil. So even the wrong thinks that their ways are clean. But here we see very crystal clear. I, I gotta stay out of the judgment position. I've gotta stay out of the position of thinking that my ways are clean enough to tell someone else that their ways are not clean. Uh, that is like the safest place to be in, in my opinion, is always knowing that I think my ways are clean, but my ways are never going to be clean enough to call somebody out on their ways that they are not clean. Bottom line is we all think that our ways are clean. He is the one who weighs us. He is the one that if we commit our works to him, then he causes our plans to be established. If we don't commit our ways to him, then our plans will not be established. Oh, they could be established in something else. But let me tell you something. The plans in which you commit to him, that he establishes them. Let's see that again. Commit your works. Commit your work. Commit your works and your work to Yahweh. And he will will make your plans established. Where do you want your plans established? Do you want your plans established on something solid? Do you want your plans established on the king of the universe who has seven billion contacts, who has all the money in the world, who can open doors that no man can shut, that can make every one of your crooked ways straight? I have crooked ways, you have crooked ways, we're all got crooked ways. He makes those crooked ways straight. That if you commit your works to him, then he, he establishes your plans even when you have crazy amounts of weaknesses like I've got weaknesses, even when you don't have a skill set to be able to, to come to the very place where it needs to be in order for you to get to where you want to go, that even you and all of your flaws, that if you commit your works to him, he establishes your plans. This is where he fills in your blanks. But what do we see in the beginning, friend? You need to be so reminded about your clean ways. All these things dovetail into the next. That you're responsible for your heart. He, hello, answers your tongue. That everyone thinks their ways are clean. He watches over the evil and the good. And the bottom line is, is if we commit our work to him, then we trust in him no matter what happens. No matter what happens, we totally trust in him that he is establishing our plans. When we continue next, we're going to dive deep into that next passage and find something really beautiful and surprising. Check this out. We'll continue right after this. Have you ever wondered if your investments are making enough money for retirement? What if you could buy an investment rental property for as little as $35,000 that rents for at least $550 a month? After Aaron and Drew Hudson asked themselves this question, Hudson Real Estate Investments was formed and now 200 transactions have been conducted. Their system helps individuals buy and hold real estate. Their definition of a great buy and hold is a property that pays you a monthly positive cash flow from day one. Hudson Real Estate Investments has a team who find properties available for immediate purchase, vet tenants, and have qualified property management in place. So if you're looking to have freedom and live your life on your own terms, grab your phone and text the word FUTURE to 484848. Get started today. Text the word FUTURE to 484848. Secure your future now. Prior to getting started with DannyJohnson.com and First Steps to Success, uh, we were spending absolutely every dime that we made. We were really struggling financially. Since plugging in to First Steps to Success just four months ago, we started a brand new business 
that is doing very, very well. Um, we've paid off $4,500 in debt, but the most important thing is my relationship with my husband has improved. Like dramatically. I mean, we have so much more fun together. You know, I don't know about you, maybe your finances, you're doing great. Maybe you're debt free. Maybe maybe your relationships with your spouse, with your family are, are great. But if not, if you have some areas in your life that feel a little out of control or there's things that you need to work on, I highly recommend getting to First Steps to Success as soon as you can. Prior to being dragged out to First Steps to Success, I was hopeless. I had no point to life. It was a day-to-day -day existence, working a job I despised for people I didn't respect. Deeper and deeper debt every year. You just couldn't get on top of it. I just had no hopes or dreams, none at all, and there was no point to life. But since coming out, um, we paid off $280,000 worth of debt, married the woman of my dreams. Uh, I came to love my job and the people I work for. Uh, I have all kinds of hopes and dreams. I get to watch them happen every day. I don't know what your life is like, you know? There's probably tons of hope. You probably know why you live and you got places you're going, but if you don't, you need to sign up for First Steps of Success. You go to dannyjohnson.com and you click Click on it and be here because your life will not be the same if you do. Prior to First Steps to Success, I was drowning in debt, I was terrified of my bills, and I wanted to travel but I never had the money. And since coming to First Steps to Success in the last 14 months, I've paid off over $18,000 in debt. I've gone on six vacations and I'm not terrified of my bills anymore. So if you want to learn some proven strategies to really learn how to connect with people, take your life to the next level, all while having a total blast you need to get registered for the next First Steps to Success today. Prior to coming to First Step to Success, we were totally struggling, totally uh, under the weight of $640,000 worth of debt, um, making $20,000 a month, but living paycheck to paycheck. So when we came here and I realized that it takes a totally different skill set to keep money, uh, to create wealth, than there is to make money, uh, I have totally turned around our lifestyle, um, we have paid off uh, $640,000 worth of debt in two years. We are debt free as of June of 2013. Uh, I don't know where you're at. Um, you might have all your finances in order. Uh, you might have a wonderful life. Uh, your marriage might be all perfect and your kids are behaving. But if not, if one of those things is lacking, you gotta get here. Uh, book your next event. Uh, you need to be here. You will not regret it. What multimillionaire do you know that volunteers their time to help ordinary people like you and me? There's only one. This is The Danny Johnson Show. I don't know if you've ever been off track or not. I know I have. <laughs> many, many, many times. And it's usually when I think I'm on track is when I'm like way off track. So be careful. Be careful. We're reading from Proverbs chapter 16. In our first and second segment, we read uh, verse 1 through 4, and now we're going to start at verse 5. This says this, Everyone proud in heart is an abomination to Yahweh. I'm going to say that again. Everyone proud in heart is an abomination to Yahweh. Wow. Remember earlier? that, yeah, all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, which is what? Pride. Pride. When we judge somebody else's righteousness, that is straight up pride. Yeah. We have unforgiveness and bitterness towards somebody else. We will not forgive them. This is straight up pride. If we're waiting for someone to, a to ask us to forgive them, someone that wronged us and we are waiting for them to come and make it right with us, that is straight up pride. Pride shows itself in so many different ways. Putting your trust in the almighty dollar is pride. Putting your trust in your skill or your job is, is full-on pride. Putting your trust in your good works is straight-up pride, friend. And this says what? Everyone proud in heart is an abomination to Yahweh. 
hand to hand, he goes not unpunished. This is where the consequences for our prideful actions result in painful places. And if you're still full of pride, you're blaming everybody that put you in that place. And if, you, if you're a victim for all the stuff that's happened in your life, that means that you're not owning your own stuff. That means that you're not owning the fact that you need to prepare your own heart. That means you're not owning the words that have come out of your mouth. And when you don't own it, well, then guess what? You're not done falling. You're not done falling. I say fall fast. <laughs> Don't fall long. Fall fast. If you're a victim, you're full of pride. Verse 6, by loving commitment and truth, crookedness is pardoned. Oh, man, look at that. By loving commitment and truth, crookedness is pardoned. That means if somebody has been crooked towards you, if you're blaming them, if you're resentful, if you have not fully released them, well, then you're in pride. And we already saw what happens from that. It's abomination to God. But it says, by loving commitment and truth, crookedness is pardoned. Why? Because you've been pardoned. You see, if you're a humble person, you know that your filthiness is just nothing but filth. Your so-called righteousness, your goody two-shoesness, your never have sinnedness, which is a lie, is nothing but filth. It's nothing but filth. It's nothing but filthy rags. That even the most righteous on the planet is just nothing but filthy rags. Their own righteousness they can produce is nothing. God is the ultimate on the chief of all righteousness. And here he clearly says that your loving and commitment, loving commitment and truth, crookedness is pardoned. Because you know that if you've had your sins pardoned and you really have that revelation that your sins have been pardoned, that causes you to be in humility, not pride. And humility will pardon somebody else. And the fear of Yahweh, one turns away from evil. When a man's ways please Yahweh, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Look at that. These verses are about the choice of humility. These verses starting from the ter very top that a man that that to man belongs a preparation of the heart. And either you're going to choose grace, humility, loving commitment, truth that's going to pardon the crookedness of somebody else. And you yes, and you because of your fear of Yahweh, you will turn away from evil. And you when you turn away from evil, the promise is that he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than a large income without right ruling. And a man's heart, and a man's heart plans his way, but Yahweh establishes his steps. I think that's a pretty loud and clear message to you today. Check your heart. Prepare your heart for humility because that's your job, to prepare your heart. And when you prepare your heart, you set yourself up for the greatest wins of your life. When you prepare your heart, your mouth should then coincide with your heart because out of the overflow of the mouth, the heart speaks and God answers your tongue. He answers your tongue. So are you using your tongue to bless your enemies? Are you using your tongue to forgive your enemies, to release them from the burden of the weight of what they know or maybe what they don't know that they've done? Because to a man, all of his ways are clean. So when you stand in that place of straight up humility and honor, truth, loving commitment, you set yourself up for the greatest wins of life. And here we see that God will establish your plans, that he will walk right alongside you. He will lead you to places you cannot get to on your own. And he will promote you. He will bless you. And he'll even, he'll even make your enemies be at peace with you. And that last thing is that he will establish your steps. He establishes your plans and he establishes your steps. Friend, I don't know about you, 
But that was amazing. I have read that so many times. You know what I love about the Bible? The best success book ever written, it is forever life-giving. It is forever feeding. It is forever guiding. So I know that you heard today a message that applies to your work life and it applies to your home life. Now it's up to you to apply it. Today, choose to lead in humility. Today, choose to commit all your works to him and he will establish those plans and cover you with all of those weaknesses that you have and the ones that I have too. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Please share it with somebody else. They might need this one. God bless. Have a great rest one of the day. Bye.